Uh, and again, on that point that Dennis ended with on a skinny after one that doesn't require congressional approval, it could also be in a skinnier package. In other words, not as much in it that the president would want to see. Uh, the wheeling and dealing already beginning. Louisiana Republican Senator Bill Cassidy on that. Senator, are you optimistic that a NAFTA deal can still be had? I mean, the timetable is very, very tough, as you've reminded me. Skinny NAFTA or no NAFTA, right? I actually think it will get done because it is so important. Your guest just pointed out that we do more trade with Canada, I would add with Mexico, than we do with all these other countries. We export more to them, I should say. Uh, in that case, it's incredibly important to our businesses and therefore to our workers. I think it gets done. Um, on the China thing, were you surprised that uh, it might not be a full-fledged deal yet, uh, but there, there is a commitment on the part of the Chinese to buy more goods from us. I guess the details would have to satisfy the president and you that it's going to be substantial in number of goods and services, right? It doesn't surprise me at all. They export in excess of $500 billion more than we today. They need our market to keep their folks moving out of poverty to a higher income level. If they don't have our market, they're going to have civil unrest. On the other hand, they may decide just to purchase commodities. That'll be fantastic for Louisiana, both agricultural, natural gas, ethane, things like that. But I think they have a lot of capacity to purchase U.S. commodities, um, and I think they could achieve what they're obligating to just through doing that. You know what I always wonder about, too, Senator, but be careful what you wish for. If they're, the Chinese buying more stuff from us ignites economic activity for those who work at the places from which they're buying, they're more inclined to buy a lot of stuff undoubtedly from China, which stands the prospect of increasing the deficit. It would be weird, but I, 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 it wouldn't be unfathomable. Well, for example, we now have agreements to start sending them ethane, and we're looking for agreements to send them natural gas. I actually think that benefits us in a variety of ways. We've pointed out that since manufacturing has moved to China, global greenhouse gas emissions have increased because they use coal as a feedstock, not natural gas. Uh, if you're concerned about the environment, you want them to use natural gas. If they purchase more of ours now, you're right, maybe our consumers make more money. Uh, they have more variety, uh, more things to buy, but that's kind of a good problem to have. No, you're right about that. Senator, I'm wondering, though, what you make of this reported division among those at the White House leading the talk. Steve Mnuchin is more, um, I think globalists have a bad pejorative to it these days, but more inclined to do things in moderation, not, 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 not sort of blow things up, as is a Peter Navarro, much more inclined to do just that. Now, there were reports that when they were in China a couple of weeks back, there was a shouting match between the two of them. We don't know what the truth is. We just know that they come from distinctly different points of views. Um, does that worry you? No, it's going to be a tension that is there. I think I would say Mnuchin is of the camp that trade is not zero sum. It can benefit both sides, whereas you get a sense from others in the administration they do think it's zero sum. I think the U.S. benefits from our investment in other countries. China is a special case. China steals our intellectual property. They tilt the rules against our companies doing business there to favor their own. Uh, if you wall off China in general, I am for free trade because I think that brings more benefits to Americans uh, than otherwise. You know, Senator, I'd be remiss if I didn't want to get your thoughts on the fallout from this school shooting in Texas. And once again, Democrats are saying Republicans have dropped the ball on this. Drop the ball on reining in guns. There are better than 300 million out there. Um, they, they're, they're big fans of what happened in Florida, where they attacked it on a variety of levels, including promoting more officers in schools, raising the age you could buy certain weaponry. What do you think of all that? Uh, I think that you pose the problem correctly. There are 300 million weapons in our society. This young man stole his father's weapons. Now, if you want to repeal the Second Amendment and tell the father that he does not have the right to have these weapons so that his son cannot steal them, that is an issue. And I think if you bear it, Democrats actually believe that. They would repeal the Second Amendment. At least as an intellectual honesty there, most times they kind of dance around the issue. Uh, we live in a free society, and so far the American people have voted for freedom. All right, so the, the efforts that were made in Florida, this would have not been the case, certainly in Texas, where I believe that the gun purchasing age is 21 anyway. And in your case, as you aptly pointed out, the assailant here uh, stole his guns from his father. But uh, leaving that aside, is there something where the sides can agree on a multi-tiered plan, much as was done in Florida, uh, or, or not? 
It's a couple of things. We've already agreed on a lot of things which are being implemented. Chris Murphy and I, he the progressive senator from Connecticut, right. co-authored the mental health bill of 2016, which is now being implemented. The understanding being that if a young person has a mental illness, they would have that mental illness addressed as opposed to fester. The last spending bill passed actually creates uh, several you know, millions of dollars for communities to use to make their schools more secure. There is also another proposal in that bill, which is yet to be implemented but now passed on a bipartisan basis, where if a child is released from school because he is seen to be a troublemaker, he won't just be released out like Cruz was in Parkland, Florida, but rather he would be into a system where the law enforcement and mental health professionals would collaborate with the school system to bring needed help and supervision to that child. So there's a lot of things that have been passed, just not yet implemented, and I would hope once implemented, we can do something to decrease the frequency of these attacks. Senator Bill Cassidy, thank you for taking the time. Very good seeing you. Hey, thank you, Neil.